Welcome to the Qualitative Election Study of Britain's Election Night Special. I'm Edzia. And I'm Christy. And now we will talk about Ed Miliband's um, impressions. So the participants in the QESP 2015 were given the option of, or given the chance, to brainstorm about each of the seven leaders, uh, silently write down their thoughts, and then of course express them in a discussion. And what we will present now are our participants' impressions of Ed Miliband. And what we will do is, just like we asked our participants to um, identify uh, positive, neutral and negative associations with Ed Miliband, we'll go through each of these associations in turn. So we'll start with the positive. And Chrissy, do you want to start with that? Right. So the things that people associated with Ed Miliband that they themselves coded as positive were phrases like tries hard, more in touch with normal people, well-meaning, strong and capable, and also improving. Yeah, so they did, um, many of our participants, especially Labour partisans, um, one of them said he's growing on me through the campaign, so that actually the campaign did make some difference to the way that people were perceiving um, Ed Miliband. In terms of neutral associations, we have awkward. So we had a couple of mentions of the bacon Sani mm -hmm. incident. Uh, uh, again, we had um, some associations in relation to um, how he became the leader of the Labour Party, people identifying the whole issue with uh, David Miliband. Uh, so we have somebody who said, I'd have voted for his brother. Uh, and then, of course, unpolished as a neutral. So some people not necessarily taking that as a negative or a positive um, uh, uh, against him. Right. And then finally, in the negatives, the phrases that often came up were things like awkward, wet, boring speaker or poor speaker, plain catch-up, media polished and not credible as an MP. And as a PM. Sorry, yes, PM. <laughs> I had a slightly moment of bleh there, so not, not credible as a PM. Thank you for that question. <laughs> so I yeah. think in terms of his overall, if you put all these things together, what probably struck us is how much he sound, these sound like the things people were saying about Gordon Brown. Last time. Yeah. A lot, especially the tries, trying hard, uh, well-meaning. Awkward. So with Gordon Brown, we would have, he can't smile. You know, those kinds of um, real um, associations with his personality. Yes. And we get a lot of that with Ed Miliband as well. Now, of course, the problem with not being credible as a prime minister is the fact that he, of course, has not yet been prime minister, or he might not be, but, you know, they hadn't seen him in that role. Mm. But that was something that did come up that people could not picture him on the international stage as mm -hmm. comfortably as they yeah, obviously could with David Cameron having already occupied that role. Yeah, um, we had some people struggle with picturing him with world leaders. Mm -hmm. it, so they would say, I can't see him on the same stage as Putin or as Obama. Right. Yeah. But on the other hand, he also, I think, came across as being a little bit closer to ordinary people and not quite as distant from their lived experiences as David Cameron's associations are. Yeah. Yeah. So. so that's it for Ed Miliband. Next up is Nick Clegg, and this is going to be very interesting. <laughs> so tune in in an hour. See you then. Bye. Bye.